Hi, my name is Michael Barton and this is my talk about the role of energetic cost in yeast gene evolution. When producing a new cell, everything in the cell will have a cost and components need to be synthesized to reproduce a cell and examples of this are production of proteins, fats and nucleic acids. The cost selection hypothesis says that these costs will be reflected in the genome where there will be a selective advantage in minimizing cost because of the savings made in energy. But when you talk about cost, what is the currency? Is the energy the currency of cost? For example, uh, are savings in terms of ATP molecules and NADBH molecules expended in synthesis? Craig and Weber looked at synthesizing amino acids in terms of glycolysis and the TCA cycle where each amino acid uh, is synthesized in a biosynthetic branch coming off um, either glycolysis or the TCA cycle. And the cost of each amino acid can be measured in terms of the ATPs used in the branching pathways as well as the loss in ATPs not generated by sending the substrate through glycolysis in the TCA cycle. And given an example of this, you can look at tryptophan. So tryptophan, uh, the synthesis of tryptophan branches off high in glycolysis so there's substrate uh, there's ATPs lost by not sending the substrate through as well as the uh, branching pathway is quite long so there's a lot of ATPs used in synthesis. So in comparison serine is considered cheaper because it has a much shorter biosynthetic branch where less ATPs are used and it's also further into glycolysis. So you can then ask the question what price does a cell have to pay in synthesizing proteins. For example, what is the energy investment involved in synthesizing the proteome? An, an, <coughs> an analogy of this is a football team. So football teams have a transfer budget where they can spend on footballers. And what benefit does a footballer bring versus the cost uh, in terms of the transfer budget? And I think you can also take a similar example uh, to proteins. What is the cost of synthesizing a protein versus the fitness advantage or the benefit? Akashi and Gojibori looked at how the cost of uh, synthesizing a protein uh, relates to its uh, predicted expression and they found that uh, the biosynthetic cost of a protein decreases with the major colon usage where a major, major colon usage is a predictor of gene expression. But in our work, we asked the question, is there a single currency for calculating a cost? And we use a systems biology approach, where we think this is good because you can look at cost in different environments, uh, as well as simulate, uh, simulate um, yeast using uh, yeast models. And we use the yeast genome scale model which is a, a, a metabolic model of yeast which has been reconstructed from 750 metabolic reactions and the uh, catalyzing enzymes are taken from the GM sequence of yeast. And using this model you can predict growth on different media as well as predict different mutant phenotypes if you, for example, knock out an enzyme. Uh, this model has a set of inputs such as, for example, glucose, ammonia, things like this, simple nutrients. And then when you run the model, it produces outputs such as carbon dioxide and water, but most importantly, it, predict it, it predicts the production of biomass or growth. In more detail, there are input reactions into the model, such as the influx of ammonia, uh, <coughs> ammonia, glucose, and then you get a distribution of resources in the model through the metabolic network, and then you get production of biomass or growth. So you have supply of resources, distribution of resources in the model and then a demand for these resources in growth. And using this model we use this to estimate cost of uh, amino acid. So we, we increased the uh, demand for an amino acid in the model and then we looked at how this affects the supply of nutrients. And so as you would expect with increasing amino, amino acid demand there is an increasing demand for the supply of nutrients. And the slope between amino acid demand is the cost, so the slope between demand and supply. And the steeper the slope, the, uh, we, we took this as the greater the cost of the amino acid. So here's an example of three costs we've calculated, tryptophan, arginine and glycine. 
So tryptophan is a large amino acid with two uh, rings in its structure, and this is one of the most expensive ones. Arginine, on you, however, is, has a long chain but has a slightly simpler structure, and so it's less expensive. And then glycine, which is a very simple amino acid, has the least cost. And these costs we've calculated are correlated with previous measures of estimated amino acid cost. But as I said, we use a systems biology approach and we wanted to estimate these costs in different environments. So looking at a nitrogen limited cost, we can see uh, that costs change, the cost of the amino acids change as the supply of nutrients changes. So tryptophan becomes less expensive, but arginine with five nitrogen atoms becomes much more expensive. And then the cost of glycine doesn't change too much. And I think this simulating of different environments to estimate cost is an advantage of using a systems biology approach. So the next stage of our work is we wanted to look at the effect of cost in uh, the evolution of the genome, and in, in particular gene expression. So is there a pressure to minimise cost? And we looked at transcript levels, protein levels and amino acid levels. And to do this we looked at how the expression level correlates with the biosynthetic cost, the atomic content, the current adaptation and the tRNA count. So energetic costs I've just explained, uh, atomic content is the uh, atoms used in the molecule. Current ad codon adaptation is the adaptation of the transcript or the protein for translation. So highly transcribed transcripts and proteins tend to have optimal codons for translation where these codons have the most number of tRNAs. tRNA count on the other hand focuses on we use, this as a, we use this as a measure to look at the number of tRNAs encoded in the genome that correspond to that codon. And so, just to summarise, we, we looked at the expression level as a factor of these four, um, these four variables. And I just want to point out that, um, importantly, energetic cost and current adaptation are independent factors in our model so we can calculate cost independent of the current adaptation of the transcript. So our first result, uh, looking at transcript levels, we can see that the current adaptation of the transcript is the most important factor in explaining uh, variation, whereas the other factors are less important. So we take this as translatability being more important than cost minimization. Next, we looked at protein levels, where you see a similar story, where current adaptation of the transcript is the most important factor over the other factors included in the model. So again, translatability is the most important variable for explaining protein levels. Looking at amino acid, free amino acid levels, there's a slightly different story, where you can see that cost, nitrogen content, and encoded tRNA count are three major predictors of free amino acid levels. Uh, comparing all of our three models, uh, we can see for transcripts and protein levels, our models explain approximately 40% 40, 40 of the variance in expression. Uh, remembering that translatability, i.e. colon adaptation, was the most important factor in these models. For free amino acids, our model explained much more, 78%, where the major predictors were cost, nitrogen content and tRNA count. So just to summarise, my work has focused on uh, looking at how biosynthetic cost is important in genome evolution. And for biosynthetic cost, I've estimated this using a systems biology approach using genome scale models in yeast. And for genome evolution, I've focused on gene expression where we're looking at the importance of cost in the expression of uh, transcripts and proteins, as well as the levels of free amino acids in the cell. I'd like to acknowledge the um, other authors of, of, this, of the paper, as well as the other members of the Bergman Group at the University of Manchester. I'd like to thank the Natural Environment Research Council for funding my PhD. And if you'd like more information, there's a preprint manuscript you can look at, as well as go to my website.